Sometimes when we think of authentication, we actually really mean integrity. These two concepts are distinct but oftentimes confused with each other. Authentication has nothing to do with the origin of the data. Asking questions like who signed the license to practice medicine, who issued this currency, uh, who authorized a purchase order for 100 kilos of fertilizer and 20 liters of diesel fuel. Integrity has to do with the validity of the data. Are these the correct payroll numbers? Has this environmental test data been tampered with since I last looked at it? Integrity isn't concerned with the origin of the data, who created it, when or how, but whether it has been modified since its creation. Integrity is also not the same thing as accuracy. Accuracy has to do with the datum's correspondence to the flesh and blood re real world. Integrity is about datum's relationship to, it to itself over time. They are often closely re related though, but distinct concepts. In the world, the integrity of the data is important. Sometimes it's important on an aggregate scale if that faulty statistic about children below the poverty line is accepted as a fact, it could change the amount of uh, international aid spent on some country. Someone who fiddles with the closing prices of, for a handful of Nasdaq stocks could make a killing on the stock market because of the uh, resulting confusion. Sometimes integrity is important to an individual. You can really mess up someone's day by tampering with his DMV records, marking their li uh, driving license as suspended. This was actually accidentally done in 1985 in Anchorage, Alaska, to about 400 people, at least one of whom had to spend a night in jail because of it. Think of the fun someone could have doing this on purpose. There have been several integrity incidents regarding the stock market. For instance, in 1997, a company called Swisher that makes toilet bowl deodorizers got a big boost to its stock uh, prices because the news services kept mixing it up uh, with another company called Swisher that makes cigars. The former Swisher was a much smaller company than the latter, so when you plugged in the mistaken earnings, it looked like an incredibly undervalued stock. Some people on the web figured out what was happening and sold the toilet bowl deodorizers stock short, figuring it would come back down when the um, investors realized their mistake. These sort of incidents are not about authentication. It doesn't matter who collected the census data or who compiled the closing stock prices or who input the motor vehicle records. These are incidents that are about integrity. And there are so many databases where integrity is so important. Telephone books, medical records, financial records, and all of those sort of things. Here's another sinister idea and a good plot for a TV show or a mystery novel. Modify the drug dosage database in a hospital. If a doctor is not play, paying close enough attention, maybe they're tired, uh, they don't know the drug uh, very closely, uh, someone is distracting the doctor, he might just pres prescribe what the computer tells him to do. This might be a little far-fetched, since there's still a lot of reliance on hard copy documentation, uh, but it is plausible. And even if no malice is involved, something like an online system that deals with prescriptions and treatments, well, it better implement integrity checking against random errors, because no one wants one misplaced byte in a database to result in an accidental death in a hospital. Neither the patient nor the software company who is going to have to deal with the lawsuit. One established way to check the integrity of data uh, is an audit. Now, double entry bookkeeping was codified in um, 1497 by Luca Pacioli of Borgo San Sepolcro, although the concept is much, uh, as much as 200 years older. 
The basic idea is that every transaction will affect two or more accounts. One account is debited by an, an amount that is exactly equal to what the other account is credited. Thus, all transactions are always transfers between two accounts. And since they always appear with a um, plus sign in one account and a minus sign in the other, the total of all accounts will always be zero. This is more or less how bookkeeping works. You balance different accounts and make sure money doesn't disappear or appear out of nowhere. If it does, in the first case, uh, someone is taking your money and the second one cannot occur naturally unless you're the Bank of Finland and can literally print money. This system had two main purposes. The two books would be kept by two different clerks, reducing the possibility of fraud. More importantly, the two books would be routinely balanced against each other. Uh, businesses would balance their books every month. Um, banks uh, would do it every day. This balancing process was an audit. So if one clerk tried to commit fraud or simply make a mistake, it would be caught in the balancing process because someone other than the clerk would be checking the work. Additionally, there would be outside audits where accountants would come in and check the books over again just to make sure. Audit or auditing is vital whenever uh, security is taken seriously. Double entry bookkeeping is just the beginning. Banks, for instance, have complex and comprehensive audit requirements. So do prisons, nuclear missile silos and grocery stores. A prison might keep a record of everyone who goes in and out the doors to balance uh, the record regularly to make sure that no one unexpectedly leaves or unexpectedly stays. A missile silo might go even further and audit every box and package that enters or leaves, comparing the shipping and receiving records with another record of what was expected. A grocery store keeps a register tape of all the transactions that happen at the register and compares how much money the register thinks is in the drawer with what is actually in the drawer. Audits are not preventive security measures, although they may dissuade attackers and attacks. An audit is designed to aid forensics. An audit is there so that you can detect a successful attack, figure out what happened, and then prove it in a court. A system's particular needs for audit depend on the application and its value. You don't need much of an audit trail for a uh, stored value card system for photocopy machines at the university, for instance, but you do need a much stronger audit trail if the cards are going to be used to make high value purchases that can uh, be converted back to cash money. Auditing can be difficult on computers because files can be easily erased or modified. This makes the job of verifying audit records more difficult and most system designers don't think about an audit when building their systems. Recall the built-in audit property of the double entry bookkeeping. That auditability fails when both books are stored on the same computer system with the same person having access to both. But this is mostly exactly how all computer bookkeeping programs work.